What's going on guys? Welcome back to the Trench Grenade channel. I am your host, the Kroger brand, Talking Balaclava, that your mom said that you had at home. Today we are going to be discussing your handgun being your lifeline, how to properly implement your handgun in a fight, in an emergency situation, and how to get your rifle back up in the fight after transitioning to your handgun. I did a video on this previously. It was one of the very first ones I released on the channel, and I felt like this was an important enough topic, topic that I go back and do a proper video on the situation. Before I get too deep into it, guys, the Discord server is live, but it is closed to Patreon members only. We're going to try to keep that server a good place to find buddies to train with and to game with. It is $5 a month. Check the Patreon out. If you become a Patreon member, you're directly supporting this channel. as the only source of funding for the channel. Once you become a Patreon member, DM me on Patreon, and I will send you a link to the Discord where you can find buddies to train with and game with. Uh, additionally, guys, don't forget to like and subscribe and do all the YouTube things. 67% of my viewers are not actually subscribed to the channel, so make sure you actually hit the subscribe button. It helps out a lot. Okay, guys, so we are on the range today. Hopefully, there won't be too much gunfire here in the background. But before we get into the actual shooting portion, I want to discuss transitioning from your long gun to your handgun, when it is appropriate, and some things to consider uh, doing that, okay? So firstly, when should I transition from my rifle to my handgun, okay? Well, if you are in a building with your intended target, that might be a good idea, okay? A detective would call that a clue to transition from your rifle to your handgun if the long gun goes down, okay? So if you're in a building or in an urban environment, we'll say within, well, uh, we'll say within 70, 70 ish meters, you know, um, of that intended threat, go ahead and transition to your handgun after the threat has been neutralized or you find cover, then get the long gun up. And we're gonna demonstrate that here today. Uh, when should you not transition to your handgun? Well, if you're 100 meters away and you have cover, just take cover and get the long gun up and re-engage from a different location. That's gonna be a crucial portion is, say I'm fighting, 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 I have a, I have a malfunction or my gun goes cold. Attempt to place a weapon on save, either clear the malfunction or reload. Don't just come back out of the same exact location that you were engaging from before. That's a good way to get shot in the face, okay? You want to relocate. Find a new place to engage the enemy from. Because if you come back out after getting your long gun back, back up into the fight and you come back out in the same exact position, you're probably going to get met with a bullet, okay? So make sure you relocate. So um, when should you transition to your handgun from your long gun? Whenever you're within that 70 meter, you know, they see you, you see them, there's no cover. Just freaking transition and start keep getting rounds on range, rounds on target, okay? Uh, again, 50 to 70 meters, that's when you're going to actually implement your handgun. Okay, guys, the drink for today's video before we get too far is water because it is extremely, extremely hot out here. So make sure you're actually hydrating. So cheers. Okay, so covered when you should transition from your long gun to your handgun. All right, uh, we covered if so if you have an ability to take cover from the enemy, if you're 100 meters away, just take cover and get your long gun up. Bringing a handgun out isn't going to do anything, okay? Make sure you just focus on always getting the long gun out, but it should be in instinctive. So if my gun goes down, and I'll just kind of talk you talk through walkthrough here. If the gun goes down in a fight and you're within 50 meters of that intended target, okay? So you're fighting, fighting, fighting. Okay, gun goes cold or the malfunction happens, but the bad guy is still there. What we're going to do is we're going to attempt to place the weapon on safe. We're going to, with our non-dominant hand, okay, we're going to turn the weapon outboard to our non-firing side, simultaneously reaching down with our dominant hand, drawing the handgun. Then we're going to meet back with the handgun, with the non-dominant hand, and engage as many times as you can. Okay, so we're going to do the beginning portion of that drill one more time, and I'll do it facing you for this next part of the demonstration, okay? So you're fighting, fighting, fighting. Weapon goes cold or you have a malfunction. First thing you're going to do is attempt to place the weapon on safe. Second step is turn outboard with your non-firing hand, simultaneously reaching down to the handgun with your, with your dominant hand, drawing the handgun, and then rejoin your dominant hand or your dominant hand with your non-dominant hand and engage, okay? That is how to draw your handgun from, or once you have a malfunction. Now, some of you are going to be saying, 
well, Trish, why don't I just drop the gun? Okay, why don't I just drop everything and go straight to the handgun? Well, I'll tell you why. Because now you're going to have a gun, a, a long gun that's flopping around. Okay, and if you have to move, you're going to have an uncontrolled long gun flopping around in front of you. Okay, so the first three steps again. We're fighting, 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 fighting. Weapon goes cold or we have a malfunction. Attempt to place the weapon on safe. With our non-firing hand, turn outboard and guide the rifle to our non-firing side. Simultaneously drawing the handgun, meet and engage the threat. Okay. From here, you are not going to attempt to bring the rifle back into the fight until you have either eliminated the threat or got to cover. Let's say you have eliminated the threat. At this point only, you're going to reach down with your non-firing hand and bring that weapon back up into your workspace, maintaining security with your handgun so that if you need to re-engage that threat, you can. Okay? So once you have a second, once you have security with your handgun, the long gun is back up. You're going to visually inspect the chamber and see what the situation is. If the bolt is locked to the rear, then you know you simply need to reload. If you have an obstruction, you're going to plan how to freaking clear that uh, obstruction. You're going to quickly reholster, remove the old source of feed, clear whatever malfunction you have, new source of feed in, and then if you need to, re-engage or get to cover. Okay, We're going to go through that step by step one more time. I'll give you guys a different angle here. Okay, so again, we're patrolling, patrolling. We have a threat pop up within 50 meters and we start engaging. We have a malfunction or plainly put the weapon, the wrong gun stops doing what I want it to do. I'm going to attempt to place the weapon on safe with my non-firing hand, rotate it out and away, maintaining control until it is to my non-firing side, simultaneously drawing my handgun and engage the threat. Once that enemy is no longer a threat, I am going to bring that rifle back up into my workspace, keeping the handgun oriented so that way I can still use it to fight, visually inspect my chamber and see what's going on. And then once there is an opportunity, I will stow my handgun, remove that old source of feed, clear whatever malfunction I have, get a new magazine in the gun, and then continue fighting. Okay, guys? All right. So what we're going to do here is we're going to go live. So give me a second while I transition to live. Before we go live, I want to talk to you guys about why the handgun is so important in these close engagements with the enemy. Whenever you're doing a raid or doing any sort of urban fight with the enemy, you're going to want to have a handgun. You're going to need to have a handgun. So I'll just share a quick antidote. I can't share too much as I am still active duty, but I will share just a quick anecdote from a military course that I have attended uh, regarding uh, urban fighting. Okay. So in this course that will remain nameless, you always load your handgun first. <coughs> Excuse me. And then once your handgun is loaded, you holster up and then load your rifle. Now, at first I thought, okay, well, that's arbitrary because at the end of the day, the rifle and handgun are going to be loaded before you go on the patrol or before you go on the mission. So what does it matter which one you load first? Here's why. So if you load your rifle first, it, there is a possibility that you will forget to load your handgun. And I know someone in the comment section, some commando that has never done anything is going to say, oh, you don't know what you're doing because you don't know how to load your gun. Negative. Here's the, here's the reason. So in this course, if you got caught loading your rifle before your handgun, it was, an, it was a strike. It was three strikes and you're out on the third strike, you're out of the course. Well, uh, we'll say a little private trench grenade. Okay, I wasn't a private at the time, but we'll use it as an example. Private Trench Grenade was doing a drill, okay, for the training, and during that drill, he transitioned, okay, to his handgun. It was a uh, Glock 17 Gen freaking 1, I think is what they had us running. It was literally, uh, might have been a damn Gen 2. It was like super old Glock 17s, okay, and and we started get, I started to engage, and guess what? It was the loudest click, no bang that I ever heard. I had to, it was my first strike, I had to uh, battle, or carry my battle buddy, 100 meters to a gong and hit the gong with a hammer, uh, signifying we call it the dummy gong. I had to hit it like 10 times or something. So it's the loudest freaking thing. You hit it with a, a hammer, dong, dong, dong. And then you have to carry, you do a ton of PT at the gong and then uh, carry your buddy again back to the starting point on your back. And that was your first strike, right? 
Well, the reason that I had the loudest click and no bang is because I had loaded my M4A1 um, first and then I had forgotten to load my Glock 17. And so I went to the drill, you know, because we're in a hurry because there's other things on your mind, right? When you're doing a course or doing anything, you're getting blocks of instruction or whatever. I forgot to load my handgun entirely. So when I had that, uh, I'm trying to avoid the microphone, guys. This is why I'm not bringing it all the way to my non-firing side. Uh, when I brought my my handgun up and I tried to engage uh, with that Glock 17, the loudest click, uh, no bang in the in the army. They went ceasefire on the range. I got my PT in, uh, carrying my battle buddy to the dummy gong, and then I learned my lesson. And I will never load my rifle before my handgun now because the thing that they're trying to teach you is your handgun is your last ditch effort. Your handgun is your lifeline. So if you load your rifle. First, this, both these weapons are loaded, by the way. If you load your rifle first and forget to load your handgun, well, you're, it's like forgetting to give yourself a last ditch effort. So from now on, when I, when I, when you guys think about handguns, I want you to think about the handgun as your last ditch effort. It is your lifeline. So if you forget to load that handgun before you load your rifle and you present it when your rifle goes down onto target and it goes click, no bang, well, you broke the golden rule and you should have been in the course with me carrying your battle buddy to the dummy gong so that way you could do some pt so i figured y'all would enjoy that anecdote of why you always load your handgun and why you should always maintain your handgun because your handgun is your last effort it is your last ditch effort to survive in this in this life and on this earth okay so just keep that in mind guys now we're going to go live so we're going to go live here we do have a fresh uspsa target hung up i'm going to go slow at first and talk through the uh the step-by-step -step method of instruction here and tell you guys how to freaking uh get from your long gun to your handgun and back up and get your long gun back in the fight okay i'm gonna go kind of slow here and just do the talk through walk through because i'm pretty sure the microphone is gonna is gonna cut out once i start fighting okay here we go slow and smooth to show y'all gun comes up engage engage until the gun goes cold attempt to place the weapon on safe go outboard simultaneously draw my handgun and engage as many times as you need to until that guy is no longer doing the thing you don't want them to do. If they start doing the thing you want, no, don't want them to do, shoot them again. Once that guy is no longer a threat, I'm going to bring my rifle back into my workspace, keeping my handgun prepared, so that way if I need to re-engage that bad guy, I can. Now I'm going to visually inspect the chamber, mostly using my peripheral vision and see, or the magazine well, seeing what the obstruction is. Once there's a lull in the fight, I will hopefully seek cover, stow that handgun, get the old freaking magazine out, new magazine in, chamber, and then reassess if I need to keep fighting or if I can just simply get to cover with the rest of my team. Nothing discussed in today's video should be taken as legal advice or as a substitute for legal advice. Always remember the four rules of firearm safety. Treat your weapon as if it is loaded at all times. Keep your finger straight off the trigger until you're ready to engage. Be aware of your target and its surroundings and never point your weapon at anything you don't intend to destroy. The Discord server is live. Get in there, get some gaming buddies and some buddies to train with. The Patreon is live. It is the only source of funding for the channel. It, if, if you're interested in it, get over there and check out the Patreon. We could sure use your help. Thanks. I'm gonna talk through, walk through the drill one more time of how to get from your rifle to your handgun um, in an emergency situation if you're in a close engagement with the enemy, okay? I'll go a little bit faster, but I still want to articulate a lot of the stuff I'm doing, okay? So there's a threat. Immediately start engaging, okay? I just realized I forgot to switch magazines. Guys, you want to have to, to practice this, okay? This is why you don't want to war game it. You want to empty mag in with a loaded chamber, okay? Loaded chamber with an empty mag in. Let's try that again. Here we go. So we're patrolling, patrolling. We have a threat. We're going to engage until the gun goes cold, attempt to place it on safe, go outboard, get the handgun up to fight, start fighting with the handgun. At this point, once the, the threat is no longer doing the thing I don't want them to do, okay, I'm going to bring the rifle up into my workspace and visually inspect the chamber. If the bad guy starts doing a thing that is threatening and I don't want them to do, I'm just going to keep engaging. Once they're no longer doing the thing I don't want them to do, I'm going to still quickly get the old source of feed out quickly get the new source of feed in pull down because i can't on that magazine and then if i have to i'll re-engage at that point okay 
Now, a lot of you guys are going to say, well, Trent, why are you attempting to place a weapon on safe when transitioning? I'm going to tell you why. Um, if you have a hot round in there or something and you shoot yourself in the leg, you're just compounding your issue. So I, for my training, I have practiced actually attempting to place the weapon on safe as you turn it outboard. All right, let's do it again. Okay, so you're, you're patrolling, you're patrolling. You know what you need to do. Okay, here we go. I'm fighting, I'm fighting, weapon goes cold. Weapon on safe, go outboard, come up, fight as many times as you need to. Okay, he's no longer doing anything. He's no longer a threat to me, okay? Or my teammate has me covered. Weapon up, inspect the freaking magazine well. When I have a lull, I'm gonna stow, old mag out, new mag in, bolt forward, and then only if I need to, I'll re-engage at that point. Um, now guys, there is a step you can add. You can reload your handgun, and I'll kind of show you what that looks like here. Okay, and don't get so wrapped up in this part. Uh, keep in mind the handgun is your life and you do want it loaded at all times if possible So a lot of this is going to be met TC dependent, but that's why you got to get reps on the range So let's kind of talk through this. So I'll just talk through first. So you're so you're fighting 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 Okay, the weapon goes cold you attempt to place on safe Hopefully I didn't just hit my microphone. You get it out of the way you get your handgun up into the fight and you start fighting Okay, if there's a lull what you can do Okay, is you can top off that handgun Okay, dump pouch, and then bring that gun back up, stow the handgun, then top off the rifle. It's up to you, okay? I, I do not do that method, but you can do that method. Now I'll just try to demonstrate that again. Okay, bring my mag back around for my dump pouch. All right, so just one more time, show you the method of how to put on safe. Handgun up, fight as much as you need to, top the handgun off, dump pouch, okay, but make sure I'm still good, bring the rifle back up, stow the handgun, old mag out, new mag in, and keep fighting if I need to, okay? All right, guys, I'm going to do this at full speed, super high speed and tactical for y'all, just so you have some repetitions to kind of look at if you're dry firing and getting into the freaking transitions. Here we go. Okay, let's do it again. Give you guys a couple more here. Just kind of Getting some full speed repetitions for y'all. If you need to re engage, do it. Okay. Yes, I'm throwing that freaking gun back on safe too quick, but I'm just trying to get you guys some repetitions. Okay. For those with, uh, ADHD and they having trouble paying attention. Okay, one more time. We got one more drill here. Patrolling, patrolling. All right, guys, so in summary, it's going to be important for you to always load your handgun before your rifle if you're ever carrying a handgun or doing urban operations. You always load your handgun before your rifle. Additionally, always make sure you freaking dry fire and practice getting that handgun out, okay? And restowing it without looking, okay? Having it out, and then if you need to restow it at the end, make sure you can do that based off of feel, okay? Uh, that's not something you wanna be trying to figure out in the heat of the moment, okay? Um, so make sure you get repetitions and you know how to get that gun out fight with it okay and then restow um yes there are going to be 
some one-handed shooting with that. Okay, guys, so make sure you actually rehearse one-handed shooting as you're doing this. Give you guys one more drill here because I'm just having fun shooting now. Okay, no longer a threat. Get this bad mamorani back into my workspace. Old mag out, new mag in, bolt forward, and re-engage if I need to. Alright guys, if you enjoy this content, you already know what to do. Do all the YouTube stuff for the for the algorithm guys, okay? Also, always keep your ejection port cover closed. That's a good way to have a malfunction if you keep it open. Oh, the gun we're running. You guys should already know this gun by now. I've had it multiple times on the channel. It is a Daniel Defense V7. I took my D-Ball A3 off because it's during the day and that thing's heavy. Uh, 1,000 lumen light with a pressure switch. Uh, Sig Romeo 5, it's painted. No backup iron sights. All you guys talking about backup iron sights probably don't train. So don't at me. I'll have an operator cult video coming up soon on backup iron sights. Let's do another drill. I guess I should loosen my sling a little bit. Let's do another one. Additionally, guys, the Patreon is live. So if you want to support, he's still moving. If that happens, guys. Okay, just get that gun back down. Hang on up. Okay, re-engage. Find your freaking handguard. Okay. Stow it. New one in. New one in. And if he's dead, he's dead. Okay? Or if they're no longer a threat. Whatever the case is may be for your uh, ROE and your situation that you're dealing with. Huh. Yeah, guys, the, the Patreon is live. Check it out. Um, we could certainly use all freaking help. Uh, I post over there all the behind the scenes type of stuff. And if you join the Patreon, you become a member of the Discord. Uh, by being a Patreon member, you become a Discord member, and then you can find buddies to train with and game with. Make sure you're getting drills in with your handgun. But keep in mind, guys, if you're not, um, it, what do I want to say? This is what I'll say. This specific transition from your long gun to your handgun, if you have to do it for realsies in real life, well, you're probably most likely you're going to be getting shot at too and or shot okay because you got to think you're super super close to the bad guy okay i'm super close to him or her she's super close to me we're shooting each other okay and for demonstration purposes only oh no okay so I, they have probably shot me or shot at me i shot at them and now i'm engaging them with a handgun while they have a rifle up y'all kind of get what i'm talking about here so it's just something to think about um yeah, so don't get so wrapped up in this drill uh, from transitioning from your long gun to your handgun and your handgun to your long gun. <clears throat> because if it happens, you're probably going to be shot. It's a really bad day. It's a really bad scenario for both of you. Um, hopefully, it's a worst case scenario for the bad guy than you. But just keep that in mind. If you're transitioning from your long gun to a handgun in a realistic fight, um, just the odds of it happening are low. But if it does happen, the odds of you walking away from it are also low. That's why training and physical fitness uh, and marksmanship are going to be huge. So get to the gym. Make sure you're actually freaking working out, getting your cardio in, getting your weights in, and getting to the range and training. Let's do this drill one more time, guys. One more time for the road. And right there is the reason why you should practice topping off your handgun uh, transitioning as well. Don't be like me and get so used to not topping off your handgun that you train that you don't train it. Find that handguard, bring it back up. Okay, make sure they're not doing anything you don't want them to do anymore. Stow that handgun, old one out, new one in. Okay, there you go. There you have it, guys. That's how I transition. Let me know how you transition. Let me know how you've been trained down in the comments below. If it's different than mine, don't be all upset and be like, he's not, you don't have to attempt to place it on safe, whatever. You don't have to turn it outboard. It's just what I do, guys. It's just what I've been trained to do. Don't get all wrapped up in the weeds on this thing, okay? I guess it would help if I put my uh, empty mag back in the gun, huh? Here we go. Let's do one more for the road. Going to the dump pouch is always a bad time. If you gotta up, if you gotta reload your handgun, 
Okay. Visually inspect. Reholster. Old one out. New mag in. Chamber. Okay. And I guess I'll show you all the target because I know the if there's any haters out there like, well, he's probably shooting at nothing. Boom, there's the target, guys. Okay. Just working the transitions. But yeah, guys. Uh, check out the Discord, check out the Patreon, all the things. Get to the range, get some training. Remember that the handgun is your lifeline. It is your last ditch effort. So uh, train with it. Make sure you're very comfortable with your handgun. Okay, guys. But this is going to be Trench Grenade signing out. Have a good night or day, I guess, wherever you are. And get to the range, get some training, guys. And make sure you treat your handgun like it's your lifeline. Always keep that baby fed. Okay, until next time, guys. It's going to be Trench Grenade signing out. Cheers. A little bit sloppy here. Oh, there we go. But guess what? I'm leaving that sloppy footage in. Yeah, we ain't fluffing nothing here as I have every gun go cold. There we go. Guess what? I'm going to leave that one in because it was super sloppy. And guess what? You got to get to the range and train. So leave the bad footage in and the good footage. Cheers, guys. Closing thoughts, guys. Make sure you take care of each other. Reach out to those buddies that you haven't reached out to in a long time. Uh, I'm sure they'd love to hear from you, and I'm sure you'd love catching up to them, especially if you're military police or whatever. Whatever job you did, reach out to those buddies that you haven't talked to in a long time and make sure they're good. Because I promise you, some dudes are not good and they're holding a lot of stuff in. Okay, We are on the ranch today, so we're thinking about So make sure you're reaching out to those buddies that you serve with or um if you're a cop or whatever make sure you reach out to those guys because you probably developed some of the best memories with them and they probably could use a shout out because you don't know what everybody's going through guys okay have a good night